My mother, my brothers, and I are incredibly touched by the love, appreciation, and the humor Dad's residents and colleagues shared with me for this video. It's been more than 30 years since Dad walked, or some might say stalked the halls of his beloved dental school, and endowing a chair in his name is truly humbling. Elmer, of course, had a, a national and international reputation in oral surgery. And so uh, just his presence at MCV gave our program and the school a very high standing among oral surgeons. And because of his reputation, he also created an incredible amount of respect for our specialty among the pre-doctoral students as well as the residents at MCV Hospital. Elmo was into and kind of on the forefront of reconstructive surgery from trauma and uh, oncology um, surgery. People in academics really don't realize uh, the impression uh, that they make on students and there's not a day goes by that uh, I'd say you know a lot of people have little bracelet you know what would Jesus do you know well, what would Elmer do <laughs> what would he do here certainly he was one of the great pioneers and icons in, in this field uh, he not only contributed on, on his own in many ways you know as a teacher as a researcher uh, but also he encouraged the people who trained with him to follow a similar path and it's amazing the number of people they trained and the positions that they've achieved as a result of his encouragement. I was always excited going to the clinic in the morning, to Dr. Bear's clinic in the morning, was going to a second home. Dr. Bear uh, would always come through and make sure that everything was in place in the morning, especially we who were supposed to be in place. And if we weren't in place, that's where we found the bear of <laughs> Dr. Bear out. <laughs> He was strict on your learning, but he had a heart of gold. Dr. Bear always said that uh, you have to be political at times, but the best thing that you can do is to uh, provide good quality patient care and do a better job than someone in one of the other surgical specialties. And that was sort of foremost in our mind. The program, of course, uh, started from uh, absolutely nothing and uh, had progressed uh, over the years uh, with him uh, being in the rain for um, about 20 years or, or so uh, to be one of the most well-respected, uh, well-established uh, oral maxillary surgery program in the country. Uh, certainly uh, the senior residents have been, uh, had their input and they worked hard at it and I would like uh, first, the, the three senior residents to rise and be recognized, Dr. Ewing, Dr. Charisel, and Dr. Cutno, who are in the back. And it's these boys who drove the whip, and they should be properly acknowledged. And the other host staff finally showed up, all of them, and I'd like them to rise, and they have had their input as well. Gentlemen? Everybody wanted to train under Elmer Bear. He loved oral surgery, he loved his profession, and he loved his residents, and that just came through. One of the things I remember the best about my dad in terms of his career and as, a, as an oral surgeon is mostly his role as a teacher. I think he really cherished his role as putting people out there to try and do what he did, although I'm sure he never thought any of them did it as well as he did. Um, and he liked being an innovator uh, and, uh, and being a leader. We had fun. We worked like dogs, but we had fun. We had fun. If 50 people signed up, you saw 50 people. And that was it. And we then at the end, sometime at the end of the week, he would give us his charge card and let us go down, down the hill <laughs> to the tobacco company. <laughs> it was his first love after his family. And um, he kept up with it, and people came calling on him, and um, it was his, his love. All our best friends were oral surgeons all over the world, and we used to visit with them, and it was wonderful. Dad's mom died when he was young. He also learned a lot about himself when he was so sick as a child. Maybe that's why he was so gruff sometimes. He had to have a lot of bark.
A multifaceted uh, personality, I would say. Um, he could be gruff, intimidating. He could also be warm and friendly. Loved the people he met. But he especially enjoyed being challenged by the residents. His name wasn't Elmer Lamb or Elmer Sheep, okay? It was Elmer Bear, and what a, what a fitting name. He was sort of the John Wayne of our specialty. You know, he was sort of always on stage, and he had a certain air about him that I think, I think it was very important for him to have that air. I think that was who he was. And, um, and, and so that was intimidating, and he sort of enjoyed being intimidating, but he didn't really take it too seriously. You missed the point. If you give a patient, and damn it, get this through your head, if you're gonna give a patient a free medication, and then... The first time I ever met him, obviously, like a lot of people, he, he very much intimidated me, scared me, and, uh, but after a while, you certainly got to know him and realize he was, you know, he was not this gruff grizzly bear, but he was a teddy bear. And as some of you who have had the misfortune, perhaps, of sitting in my lectures in the past, you know that I don't like to use a mic. Well, Elmer was an outstanding leader. Uh, in fact, sometimes it was difficult to keep him quiet at meetings. Uh, but even though he was vocal, uh, he always had important things to say. So he was worth listening to, even though at times he got a little loud. People who knew him well knew that he had a terrific sense of humor, it, uh, often a sarcastic sense of humor. Uh, he loved a good joke. But those who didn't know him well usually didn't realize that he was uh, kidding. I remember a case where he was supposed to do and he got sick and Dr. Bear was in the intensive care. He got out of his bed and it was a little child. He went to the OR, did the case, and then went back to his room. Now how dedicated could a person be um, to his profession? as well as to people than Dr. Bear. He was a very dedicated person. He loved his work, he loved people, and he loved us learning how to do things correctly. He was clearly very caring of patients uh, and his residents and always looking out for their welfare. He was a very, to me, a very unique, true friend. When I was accepted into the program, uh, many of my classmates just shuddered at the thought that, uh, that what a nice guy like me could deal with, with Dr. Bear. And of course, what they didn't know is that he had an incredibly big heart. And uh, I, I've never known anyone who really treated his residents, staff, and patients who had significant uh, health problems any better than he did. He'd be thrilled to know that the chair was going to be named for him. I think he'd be very proud. I can't think of a more fitting legacy than to uh, fund a position for a teacher in the field that he loves so much. Dan would be honored to think that his students and colleagues were thought that much of him to develop a bear chair, and uh, he'd be very proud of that legacy, I think. Oh, he'd be grinning. He would be smiling. He would be smiling. <laughs> I think it's important to honor a person who was a stalwart within the dental school, in the nation, and in oral surgery. And I think if we can provide the financial aspects through donations to help achieve that, it will be a great honor for Elmer. Having his name attached uh, to uh, a distinguished person who would contribute to continue to make the same contributions and have the same goals that he did, uh, he'd be very pleased. The endowed chair, I think, would, have, would be very important for the School of Dentistry and certainly for our department. Obviously, department chairs change over time, and this would be very helpful in recruiting outstanding candidates. It'll also, by attracting outstanding department chairmen, 
uh, means we're also going to out attract outstanding candidates for, for a residency program. I have had a lot of conversations with many of the oral surgeons and, and particularly the Richmond community that trained under Dr. Bear. Um, and uh, I, I wish I'd had a chance to meet him because uh, I think this could be uh, uh, no doubt the, uh, a high point for the School of Dentistry's history uh, to be able to have the first endowed chair named after Dr. Elmer Bear. His uh, dad before, and and the uh, bear name will continue for quite a long time. And Elmer really pretty much did it all as president of AAOMS, and the, what he established and accomplished in creating uh, such a strong program at MCV, not just at not in the dental school, but in the medical hospital and community there in Richmond. His legacy will, you know, live for a very long time. We're one of the best clinical department in the country, uh, and we continue to strive to be um, one of the best in all aspects. And a research area is one of the things that we want to look into in the future. There is no better name to associate that with uh, uh, than Dr. Baer, who literally dedicated his life both to education and patient care. To a guy who's gotten uh, just about every honor, this is the ultimate honor, that guy did more uh, for the specialty of oral maxillofacial surgery in his 60 years in the planet that will, that may, more than it may happen in the next 100 years. And uh, I miss him. I really do.